Yeah. So, what are you doing? Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The, I'm not ready for this. Yeah, you are. Right. Just the, 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 the coffee run. <laughs> coffee run. Coffee run. Coffee run. Coffee run. Coffee run. Laura knows the way to our hearts. Panic over Nils, yeah? Oh, I need a coffee in the morning. Panic over. So is it plan B? Bye, Harry. Cheers for the helmet. Cheers for the helmet. TT day. I'll keep this short because I need to like get in the zone and all of that jazz. Harry's off. I have been having arguments with the UCI jig because it moves. World order has been resumed and I'll be taking the start on a legal bike, which is good. So, yeah, nice course, sporting course. See how it goes. Bye. Alex Dowsett, the British time trial champion, rolled away from the start. Another former time trial winner in the Tour of Britain. Fucking good and fast, eh? Come on, come on. Stay aggressive, come on. Already five seconds faster than uh, Harry at this point. On our way for a top performance. He went through the intermediate time check and he was one second up on Eduardo Affini. He caught Matt Walls on the running towards the finish. Go, on, Alex. Go, on, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is your speciality. Come on, mate. You're in your country. You're the national champion. Come on, Alex. We have, we have some bars where we can recover. But here we go full, eh? Push it. Come on. Use that power. Dowsett's finishing time, though would be a sign of things to come and the way Eduardo Affini had finished his time trial. Dowsett crossed the line with a time of 16 minutes and 52 seconds and the British time trial champion would eventually finish seventh on the stage. Market Street in Altrincham was the start for the eighth and final stage of the Ovo Energy Tour of Britain. 166 kilometres finishing in Manchester city centre. You made it. <laughs> yes, yes. What's the plan now? Head back home tonight. Yeah. Then um, probably four days easy, like really easy. Either one or two hours or nothing. Um, then a couple of hard days and then resting up for Welts. Must be pleased for Niels to get a top five. Yeah, yeah, we had yeah, a focus at the end of the race uh, after TT was just simply to keep that or even try and improve on it. But, you know, it let us just keep the position. So uh, we, we did it, so we're awesome. way happy. That's a wrap on the 2019 Tour of Britain. I haven't updated as much in the second half because the second half just didn't go as well for me. Felt utterly magical for the first two days, which almost, almost resulted in a stage win on stage two. And then just kind of slipped. I've kind of had it in a few stage races where I've been great to start and then just dropped 10% and maintained that 10% drop throughout. And it's, it's frustrating. Need to look at it for next year. The time trial was, it was okay, was, you know, seventh place, it's not where I want to be, but took something from it, you know, played around with a few new things, didn't work, I faded hard in the second half, so for my TT, my race TT bike home for this last week ahead of uh, World Championships, just to make sure we are all locked, loaded and ready to go. The crowds today were immense, absolutely like biggest I've ever seen them. Oh, like the week as a whole, I'd say the crowds were a little less than normal but then today just completely bucked the trend today was mental and brilliant to be a part of but yeah i can't help but it'd be quite sad actually the british scene's taken a hit this year we have this obscure problem in the uk where this quality of riders is huge the effect of this the Olympics back in 1996 and the year 2000, the trickle down effect of that has been massive, but we lack, you still, to make it as a pro, you, you can win everything under the sun in the UK with the exception of the Tour of Britain and the Tour de Yorkshire. That isn't going to net you a pro contract, you still have to go to Belgium, France, like Holland, and it's a shame, it's a shame. 
so now back home, 60 now in a second, and then altitude, some easy days, and chilling out, relaxing, catching up with what's been going on in Albert's world, and Chanel's world, but Albert's world, and uh, yeah, all in for worlds. <laughs> I know, it always miss you. Yeah, you look me right in the eye. I, know I am gone a week, a whole week, and we have Christmas carols and a Jumbo Visma bottle. And cake. <laughs> Better be a good cake, because I'm feeling betrayed. Anyone else get in the car after the other half driven it and have to slide the seat back? Oh. <sighs> Gotta move the bike back a bit. I make no apologies. I really like Christmas. There's no shame in it. It's okay to like Christmas. And I just find sometimes it just makes me feel really happy if I put Christmas carols on. What am I dancing against? My backpack's here. Can it's I... fine. Yeah, it's just clothes. Yeah. Sorted. It's 2 18 in the morning. Yeah. Hungry. 2.19. Hungry. In June of last year, we actually saw the Stereophonics in Glasgow. That's what's live uh, on the television, not live, <laughs> it's what's, we're watching the live recording of it on the television at the moment. It's just nice to kind of relive, relive the past a little bit while this guy does his exercises and his stretches. You're not a pro cyclist living in Spain or Europe unless you've got this specific rug. When we moved here, we sort of kitted it out, basically went to Ikea and when we were visiting friends, everyone has this rug. So it's now become a bit of a running joke that this is the pro cyclist Ikea rug. If Albert goes and stays with anyone, we know that they've got this rug, so it's like a home from home. Yeah, it's just like lounge yoga. But not yoga, just stretching.